So, hi everyone, I'm Dr. Arbaz and the topic of today's lecture is Articulators and this lecture is for the class of 2024, year 3 students. So, if you recall on 2nd June, I had covered a lecture on occlusal plane orientation and phase board transfer. And after that, we covered maxillomandibular relationships, specifically, you know, centric relationship. So the whole purpose of all these lectures or all these steps in complete denture is to ultimately make a prosthesis that is fits well in the patient mouth and is well adapted. So for this to happen, we have something called as articulators which simulate the patient's temporomandibular joint and his upper and lower jaws. So all these steps previously which are the centric relationship records, the orientation relationship, the vertical relationship, you and the use of face bows is all done so that we can mount the patient's uh, models in the uh, articulator. So let's uh, move on to the outcomes. You are expected to be able to define and classify articulators. You should interpret the different parts of the articulators and should be able to infer the purpose and the uses of the articulators. You should also be able to select an appropriate type of articulator for your patient. Coming to the definitions, an articulator is a mechanical instrument that represents the TMJ and the jaws to which the maxillary mandibular cast may be attached to simulate some or all of the mandibular movements. So, simply put, an articulator is an artificial substitute of the patient's mouth, that is the TMJ and the jaws outside the patient's mouth in the laboratory so that you may be able to fabricate a prosthesis, whether it may be a RPD, a complete denture or a PFM restoration or all ceramic crown or anything etc. So articulation as such is the static and dynamic concept relationship between the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and of the teeth during first function. So articulation means the static and dynamic relationship of the patient's teeth or that of the denture teeth and occlusion as such is a static relationship between the incising that is the masticatory surface of the maxillary mandibular teeth or the tooth analogs that is artificial substitutes of the teeth so coming to a functions coming to the functions of articulators as i said the primary function of the articulator is to hold the maxillary mandibular cast in the planned position as it is in the patient's mouth you should also simulate the patient TMJ, the mandible maxilla and the various mandibular movement to a certain extent. It should also open and close similar to the patient that is in a hinge movement. You should be able to mount the cast for diagnosis, treatment planning and for the patient representation. You should be able to fabricate occlusal surface of the restorations. So and finally we should be able to arrange artificial teeth on the articulator, we should be able to teach and study occlusion and the mandibular move. So these are all the functions or the purposes of the articulator. Now coming to the advantage of articulator. So what are the advantages of articulator compared to definitely the patient? So first thing is that articulators provide a better view of the patient's occlusion especially the lingual or the parietal side and the distribution of the mouth which is difficult to view within the patient's mouth on a dental chair. They also help in refinement of the complete denture occlusion in extremely which is extremely diff difficult intraorally because of, of the movement of the denture base on the resilient soft tissues in the patient's mouth. And these problems are eliminated in articulator because we have hard tissue models made out of uh, gypsum which are uh, anchored or solidly mounted to the upper and lower plates of the articulator. Patient cooperation is not a factor because you are working on an articulator. So sometimes in the uh, where you find difficulty in doing even simple procedures such as taking a record in a patient's mouth, these difficulties are not encountered if you use an articulator. Of course, the chaser time of the dentist is reduced since you are doing all the laboratory phase and the uh, procedures on the articulator. Some procedures can be given to technicians if an articulator is used. That is, you take the records, whether it is centric or eccentric records, you take the impressions and along with the articulator at the face, you send it to the lab and the entire uh, laboratory work can be done by a third person that is the technician. And finally, patient's tongue, saliva and cheeks, all these things are not factors here. You are just working with the upper and lower models and fabricating the restorations that you need to fabricate. Moving on. However, articulations do have certain limitations. That is, the articulator is subjected to, subject to errors of tooling and the errors resulting from metal fatigue and the wear. 
No articulator can exactly duplicate the patient's condyla movement. It can compensate. It cannot compensate for any errors in the jaw relation. That is, if there were errors in the jaw relationship, the errors will be compounded on the articulator, and there is no way to adjust or you know uh, somehow compensate these errors on the articulator. And of course, point number two is that you cannot duplicate the exactly the condylar movements of an articulator, but with the advent of the you know fully adjustable articulators and the pantographs and the steel lithographs, uh, we can to a great extent determine the true hinge axis of the patient's TMJ, and uh, which is the closest thing to a natural live patient. So coming to the classification of the articulators, there are different classifications, but we'll be uh, diving into many two types of classification. First is based on the position of the condylar elements. That is, as you know, uh, like just like a TMJ joint, which uh, which consists of the condyle, the articular disc, the glenoid fossa, the the various ligaments of the temporomandibular joints. Similarly, articulators can be divided into two categories that is Archon and non-Archon articulators. Archon articulators, these are a type of articulators in which the condylar element that is the head of the condyle is in the lower member. Just like in natural dentition, we have the condyle is attached to the body of the, the ramus or the mandible and the articular fossa or the glenoid fossa is attached to the maxillary. So in a similarly in this also we have the condylar element attached to the uh, lower member. In the non alcohol type of articulator the condylar element is attached to the upper member. So these are broadly the differences between an alcohol type of articulator and a non alcohol type of articulator. So moving on. This term Archon was, uh, uh, was coined by Bergstrom in the 1950 which, uh, was, which was derived from the word articulator and condyle that is AR from the word articulator and CON from the word condyle. So this was the first time somebody uh, coined the term Archon for an articulator in 1950 and this is one of Bergstrom's articulator that is an Archon type of articulator in which the condylar element is attached to the condylar support on the lower member and the fossa is in the upper member of the articulator. Next is based on the function of the articulator. The International Prosthodontic Workshop at the University of Michigan in 1972 proposed a different and very elaborate classification for articulator which is universally accepted and followed throughout the world. So in 1972 at the International Prosthodontic Workshop, the, these are the uh, minutes or appendix from the meeting in which the first time a comp comprehensive classification of articulators was given. So here we can see from excerpts from the pages of the 1972 conference, we can see here different classifications such as class 1, class 2 and so on. So basically there are four classifications in this that is from class 1 to class 4. Class 1 articulators are basically a simple holding instrument which is capable of accepting a static registration that is only the artic the upper and lower member move vertically in a vertical direction there is no rotatory or hinge movement and there is no eccentric movements these type of articulators do not accept phase bow transfers these type of articulators cannot simulate the patient's hinge axis we still use in, uh, in these type of articulators especially these are being these are used by dental technicians and laboratories so one example is a slab articulator so this is a type of articulator in which basically the land area or the base of the upper and lower models are made with the plaster and the plaster are extended in such a way to make a key and keyway between the upper and uh, lower parts of the uh, upper and lower cast. So in this way they just move vertically that is the upper and lower member can be separated like a jigsaw puzzle in a vertical direction only. So this is a very poor form of the articulation type of class 1 articulators are a hinge articulator which I am sure some of you have seen in laboratories and dental labs, private labs. So this is the basic hinge articulator as the name suggests. This is just a simple hinge that moves up and down. Another type of articulator is a barn door articulator uh, because it is called a barn door articulator because it resembles the hinges of a barn in a farm. 
So the difference between both of them is that the hinge articulator does not have an incisal rod or a vertical stop, whereas the barn door articulator is slightly better and it has an incisal rod. So next classification is a class 2 articulator. This is an instrument that permits horizontal as well as vertical motion. So here it is not just uh, vertical motion, it to a certain extent it allows the horizontal movement of the upper and lower members of the articulator but it is uh, a very arbitrary it cannot accept a phase board transfer and it's further divided into three categories that is class 2a b and c so let us see what class 2a is class 2a examples are one is a gritman articulator by in 1899 so this is a gritman articulator and this is a geisse simplex articulator so basically these class 2a articulators the condyler and the incisal elements uh, or the paths are determined by uh, arbitrary values that in the Gritman articulator the condyler path is inclined at 15 degree. Uh, this is generally taken from a large measurement of the population. Similarly in Geisse's articulator the incisal plane or the incisal table is inclined at 60 degree and the horizontal condyler inclination is fixed at 30 degree. So these are, they use these values uh, after taking uh, measurements from a large number of population and these were mean values. So basically class 2A articulators are articulators which are uh, fixed and these were the condyler and the incisal that is horizontal and the incisal guidance values are set based on average values. So the type of articulators you guys use in clinics are also a type of class 2A articulator. And second is the class 2B articulator. These are also articulators that uh, that are able to express simple vertical and rotary motions. But these articulators are based on the principles of theories of motion such as the spherical theory, the Bonville's theory, conical theory. So uh, the spherical theory. This theory was given by Monsoon. So this theory suggests that each cusp and incisal edges of all the teeth of the upper uh, jaw that is the maxilla conformed to a segment of the sphere which is 8 inches in diameter with its center over the glabella. And he also uh, made an articulator which is known as the monsoon's articulator. So you can see this articulator has a joint over here and this represents the diameter, uh, diameter of 8 inches. And like he mentioned the in this articulator the spherical theory uh, says that the upper occlusal and the incisal surfaces of the upper teeth that is the maxillary teeth should conform to a segment of a sphere which is 8 inches in diameter and with its center at the glabella. So this way. So you can visualize. So basically Monsoon said that the occlusal plane is oriented to the surface of a sphere which is 8 inches and with its center at the glabella. So his articulator is based on this theory and second is the Bonville's articulator which is based on the theory of equilateral triangle which states that the intercondylar distance and the distance from the condyle to the center of the lower anterior teeth that is to the midline is a, an equilateral triangle and based on this Bonville made his own articulator known as the Bonville's triangle. So this, the, this equilateral triangle has 4 inch sides on each side. And the third theory was the conical theory given by Hall in 1915. So this is Hall's articulator based on the conical theory. So Hall, what did Hall state? Hall stated that the lower teeth, that is occlusal inside the surface of the lower teeth, move over the surface of the upper teeth as they are moving over the surface of a cone, generating a 45 degree angle with the central axis of its body and with the cone tipped at 45 degree that is it is horizontal to the occlusal plane so something like this so this is uh, conical theory of hall which states that the occlusal plane lies at the surface of a cone which makes a 45 degree angle with its central axis so this was class 2b and the last is class 2c so this articulator was given by House and it is known as a House Articulator and designed in 1927. So this articulator is similar to what we would call uh, uh, centric relationship uh, records that is dynamic records. So as you may would have known in 
in the last lecture that is maxillary mandibular relationship we had covered needle house method of recording the centric relation or the protrusive and retrusive motions so in this uh, what you call uh, compound rims are fabricated with stylus four stylus fixed on the mandibular rim and uh, wax rim or the compound rim in the lower and then the patient is asked to do various movements and these diamond shaped tracings are recorded so this how then accepted these uh, tracing to mount the maxillary and the mandibular articulator. So needle house uh, tracing method is used for the articulation of the models in the house articulator only. So next coming to the class 3 articulator. So these are articulators slightly better. They accept the eccentric motion that is protrusive uh, lateral records and also the allow the adjustment of the movements according to the patient but only a part of the patient's condylar movements can be simulated here hence they are categorized as semi-adjustable these type of articulators except protrusive record lateral record you can adjust the horizontal condylar guidance the lateral condylar guidance the incisal guidance but to a certain extent and uh, not accurately as it is in the patient because these articulators accept static records and not dynamic records and but the key difference between class 2 and class 3 is that they accept the phase code transfer and these are the articulators that uh, come under the classification of Arcon and non-Arcon articulators. So there are two articulator categories in this class 3 that is class 3A and class 3B. So let us see what class 3A is there. Class 3A is articulators that accept only protrusive records. They do not accept lateral that is lateral protrusive records. And, later, and the lateral torsive uh, condylar guidance is calculated by a formula which was given by Hanau that is where lateral condylar guidance is equal to horizontal condylar guidance divided by 8 plus 12. So we can get the we can determine the lateral condylar guidance using this formula and it is set here on the uh, base of the lower member you can see here some readings so these are for the lateral condylar guidance which we obtained from the formula. The horizontal condylar guidance is set by the protrusive records which are obtained from the patient. So the example of these are Hanau model H and H2, Dentatus and Bergstrom and these articulators except Facebo and this what you are seeing here is a uh, what you call a non-arcon type of articulator because here the condylar sphere is attached to the upper member and the condylar pathway is in the vertical rod that is in the lower member. So next coming to the class 3B, uh, examples of class 3B are Hanau Kinescope and this is a knees articulator and also panadent articulator. Now the key difference between class 3A and B is that class 3B also accept lateral records. Class 3A only accept protrusive records. So next coming to the class 3 uh, that is class 4 the, the final classification of the articulator these articulators are categorized as fully adjustable articulators the class 3 was a semi adjustable articulator whereas class 4 is fully adjustable articulators and these articulators are only arcan type of articulators and they even have adjustable intercondylar distance so these articulators are again classified into two categories class 4 a and b the key difference here is that these type of articulators accept accept three dimensional dynamic registrations not uh, they do not accept uh, what you call static uh, protrusive and lateral protrusive records but they accept dynamic records from the patient using special instruments that are known as uh, stereographs and uh, pantographs. We will talk about them later. So some examples of these articulators are the store articulator and uh, Dena D5A. So these are articulators that accept a Facebook transfer. They are uh, capable of adjust and accepting the dynamic uh, records and they the intercondylar distance is also adjustable in these articulators. So next coming to the class 4A that is the first category. So in this uh, category we have Swanson's TMJ articulator. This is the Swanson's TMJ articulators. So these articulators accept dynamic records that is they accept stereographic recordings made from the patient and then depending on these stereographic recordings the condylar that is horizontal condylar guidance the lateral condylar guidance and the incisal guidance is customized on the articulator. 
so here you can see that uh, first just like we do a facebook transfer using a byte fork uh, on a byte fork the uh, uh, impression material is attached and the facebook transfer is done using the byte fork this is to mount the maxillary uh, uh, model on the cast on the articulator after this uh, these in the second picture what you see are something called as clutches which are made out of uh, composites or resin material these clutches are then attached to the upper and lower record bases and uh, the upper clutch has these five studs or styli and uh, it makes the diamond shape or the arrow typical arrow tracing for the protrusive centric and the lateral protrusive guides or the uh, mandibular movements after this over these arrows acrylic or self cure acrylic in the dose stage is placed and these records uh, these clutches along with the acrylic are then placed in the patient's mouth attached to the upper and lower wax rims and the patient is told to perform all the mandibular border movements and patient performs dynamic border movements which shapes these acrylic records and then these clutches are then attached to the upper and lower member of the articulator and with the help of these records we uh, customize the horizontal condylar guidance the incisal guidance so this is done by placing acrylic in the uh, uh, in the sleeves of the condylar guidance and when the acrylic in the dose stage using these records the operator does forceful uh, protrusive and lateral movements and depending on the shape of these records, the intraoperative records, the acrylic or the horizontal condylar acrylic uh, custom guides are prepared. And after these, uh, the uh, horizontal, the lateral, the incisal guidance are set. Something like this. It is a little difficult to explain to you guys because these are things that uh, cannot be learned or remembered in one time. And unless we sh can show it uh, by a uh, doing a demonstration a practical demonstration difficult to say but this is you can see acrylic is placed in the condylar sleeves and using the records and the clutches the mandibular movements are done that is protrusive centric lateral protrusive movements and the acrylic is shaped so these are the customized uh, condylar guides for that specific patient and the, in the similar way that we also get we place acrylic on the incisal table and we get a customized incisal table so we have this is the incisal guidance this is the horizontal condylar guidance and also depending on this we adjust the lateral condylar guidance so next is the class 4b so these type of articulators uh, they accept they do not accept stereographic tracing but they accept pantographic records and tracing so if you remember in my last lecture that is on maxillomandibular relationship i had showed you what a pantograph is and what are pantographic tracings so basically pantographic tracings are like we do tracings on a graph paper and with a butter paper over it so these are just two dimensional tracings which are obtained similar to gothic arch tracing in the patient's mouth and these are obtained in all the three planes simultaneously by asking the patient to do dynamic mandibular movements in all the directions. So these you can see horizontal tracings, these are sagittal tracings. So these are obtained with a styli and a graph on the pantograph. So this is an electrical pantograph with uh, flags attached on the side of the, of the patient's face that is in the sagittal plane and over this flag the uh, graphs graph paper is uh, attached and of course since this is an electronic pantograph we do not use uh, need uh, graphs over it so and the styli makes the recording of the records the patient's mandibular movement capable of accepting these recordings so that brings us to the end of the class 4 type of articulators so let us come back again to the class 2 a type of articulators which you guys use in the lab over here so this is so you guys i think uh, are able to recognize this this these are the articulators that you use in the laboratory in the process department here so this is a three point average mean value articulator so the three points are the incisor table and the two condylar uh, studs over here and this is called as average because the intercondylar distance is set to an average of 110 mm 
and the condyler guidance and the incisor guidance values are also set to mean values of the population. So this is the upper member, this is the condyler shaft, this is the lower member, this are the additional pin for orientation of the occlusal plane, this is the incisor rod, this is the incisor pin, this is the incisor rod adjustment screw, this is the incisor table and these are the upper and lower members. So, so you can see here we these condyler shafts are set at a fixed average distance of 110 mm and the, this is the horizontal condyler guidance set at 30 degree uh, and it has a spring so that you can do some to some extent protrusive movements so this is set at 30 degree and uh, that's why it is a class 2a type of articulator which is uh, which incorporates arbitrary and the incisor table is set at a uniform 5 degree or in some articulator it will be set at 10 degrees. So this uh, was the articulator that you guys use routinely in the lab and in the process department. So next coming to the laboratory procedure. So I will be briefly brushing through the laboratory steps involved in the mounting procedure with the semi-adjustable articulator. You guys are already familiar with the mounting procedures with the class 2 articulator. So basically, uh, we, I'll just show in a nutshell how you do the mounting using a phase bow in a semi-adjustable articulator. So this is a dentator semi-adjustable articulator. This is the upper and lower member. These are a condyler sphere. This is the condyler path. These are the lock nut for uh, stabilizing the condyler sphere. This is the incisor table. This is the curved incisor rod. This is the incisor rod adjustment screw. And these are the condyler post. So moving on, <clears throat> so this is a 2D sketch of the same <laughs> dentatus articulator. So uh, first step uh, before we do the mounting of the maxillary and mandibular wax rings or the maxillary mandibular cast, we have to zero the articulator. This is something like you know how we reformat or factory reset a phone. Phone that is you. Mm, delete all the data or zero all the readings previously that were there. So in this the horizontal condylar guidance is set at 40 degree and the lateral condylar guidance is set at 20 degree and the incisal guidance is set at zero. So this is called a zeroing of the articulator. After this the articulator is ready to accept the phase. So after this the phase bow is attached to the articulator this is the incisal uh, orientation plane so and these are the two uh, earpiece which go and attach to the horizontal condylar elements on the articulator and the maxillary cast is along with the bite fork is using this uh, as phase, phase bow and the mounting uh, jig is mounted on the upper member of the articulator after mounting of the maxillary Max rim, the upper and the lower max wax rim, and we, along with the model is placed on the maxillary wax rim, and these are uh, sealed with the help of a centric record which is obtained with the Gothic arch tracer. So you can see here this is extra oral Gothic arch tracer, and uh, at the centric position a plaster index is made, and this is used to orient the mandibular and the maxillary cast. After this, the plaster is poured onto the base of the mandibular cast and the it is attached to the lower member of the articulate. So this uh, brings us to the end of our lecture. Uh, so here you can see uh, all the various type of articulators from a simple hinge articulator to a Geissy simplex articulator. This is house articulator which uses the needle house Patterson method and that after that we have the class 3A, class 3B and class 4 articulators are Dinar D5 and the Stratos 300. And nowadays because we have uh, virtual impressions, virtual uh, planning of the uh, any type of processes and we have digital CAD CAM mill dentures and uh, uh, ceramics such as Zirconia, Emacs, Empress, all these things. So we also have something called as virtual art articulator. So that brings us to the end of our lecture. So